Learning to be present. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Welcome to The Hopefulist, a daily talk show hosted by veteran broadcaster Wendy McClure. Join Wendy each day as she shares her life lessons that transformed her from perpetual pessimist to the ultimate hopefulist. The perfect morning show to get you caught up on the day's top stories while sharing insights that will lead to positive transformation and bring out the hopefulist in you. For more inspiration, visit hopefulist.com. And now, here's your host and hopefulist, Wendy McClure. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to The Hopefulist. Thank you for joining me for your daily dose of inspiration and positivity. The quote of the day. Are you ready for this? If we miss the moment, we miss the clues. In the present, we allow ourselves to fully live there. We are restored, made wiser, made deeper and happier. Just got to figure out how to do it, right? One of those things. Tough to do. Tough to do. We're going to get into more of that on the blog post for today. I'm having a little trouble walking this morning. That's right. I worked out yesterday. I worked out probably for the first time in, well, the first time I did a full body workout. I've been sneaking a couple of arm workouts in here and there. But for the past month or so, I've been pretty much a slacker. Yeah, I'm admitting it. I have been, I've been a slacker. I've been uh, dealing with some aches and pains, which is part of the reason, but not all of the reason. I can probably power through. So I'm back on my Monday, Wednesday, Friday workout. Non-negotiable. It is a non-negotiable. And I am going to finish the year strong. Literally. Finishing the year strong. How about you? Are you going to wait until January 1st to start doing good things for yourself and your body? Or are you going to just start now? It's December 1st, people. Yes. The start of a brand new month. It is the last chapter of 2020. And we can make it a good one. We can change the whole ending of this book by putting that twist in the end. You know all the best books have a twist at the end. Let's make December the twist to 2020. Oh my gosh, you all posted your trees for me yesterday. They are so gorgeous. I loved them all so much. If you have not had a chance to check them out, go to the Hopeless group page. And I posted two of my trees my smaller trees, because you know I'm tree crazy. I'm the crazy Christmas lady. I have already posted a picture of my massive living room tree, and then I have two smaller trees, one in the corner of my house that has been deemed my nautical slash home tree, and I put one out on the porch, and then everybody posted their pictures as well on that post. They're so pretty. There's so many of you that posted your pictures. So thank you so much for doing that. I love seeing everybody's different uh, takes on their trees, the the different decorations. And do we do colored lights? Do we do white lights? Which leads to the topic of the day. I have typically been a white light person on my tree. But, but... For the last couple of years, I have done red and white. So I I guess that's technically colored, even though when I I think of colored lights, I think of the multicolored, which I, I don't know if I've ever done that on a tree. I think maybe once or twice I've put colored lights on the tree. I'm not a fan of the colored lights. I know the kids like colored lights a lot more. I typically like white lights, white lights, white lights. Or red lights, because red's my favorite color. And I do like to throw some red in there. So I guess technically I have a colored light tree, 
um, but not in the multicolor fashion that I kind of think about when I'm talking about white versus colored lights. Outside, we have colored this year. Typically, I like to have white all over. Now, the last couple of years, I've had that um, laser light for the outside of the house. They've all broken. They've all broken. I bought this. It's not a laser light, but like um, a silhouette light. When we first moved in here, that does like the different colors and speeds and all of that. It's not just the, you know, straight on laser drape light, which is what I love. And I had bought one two years ago, I think, with an end of Christmas sale. And that's the red and green, and the red has burned out. Yes, the red has burned out. So I decided to put the original one back outside, and right now I can set it to any color that I want. I have a choice of white. I have a choice of red. I have a choice of red and white. I have a choice of multicolored. I have a choice of red, white, and blue, uh, and then red, white, blue, green, green and blue. It's all over the place. So I figure I'm going to do – a change every couple of days. And then we decided to put multicolored lights around the edge of our garden out front in the house. We had bought these, you know, big type old fashioned bulbs for a tree that we had in our yard at the last house we lived at here, our rental. And we haven't really, with the first year we lived here, I think we, we strung them along the roof. You know, honestly, I don't like my husband up there. I, I, I just don't like him up there. We don't do that anymore. Let's just make it simple. That's why the laser lights are perfect, right? Perfect. If only I could get them to continue working. Every single laser light I had (laughs) refuses to work. I did put the laser light in the porch with just the green showing. So that's good, too. It's fine. It's fine. So when I asked my husband how he uh, thought the lights looked, outside from the front of the house. He said, I don't know. It looks like that, you know, it looks like we were just being lazy. I said, well, we were just being lazy. (laughs) You know, I often want, uh, wonder about the people who have these like super straight lines along their roof line and around their windows. Like they must really take a lot of time and secure those properly. I can't even figure out how to get Garland to stay on the rails of my steps. We tried that the one year and every day, I came home and they were drooping a little more, falling down the rail a little bit more. I don't know. I don't know what we do wrong. I don't know. I don't really want to put nails or something in the wood. So I guess I kind of half-ass it. I don't know. We we haven't even done that the last year or two. I might look into getting a little bit of garland for the rails this year. We'll see. We will see. I have to hit Michael's again today uh, for a few things that I am putting together. I am putting together. I'm going to tell you. I haven't put it together yet, but it's in the works. A hopeless gift box. Very limited supply. And it's going to be either a gift for yourself or a gift to someone that you think could benefit from a little inspiration and positivity. It's going to be setting you well on your way to becoming the happiest, most joyous version of yourself. Stay tuned. It is coming. It is coming. So I wanted to hear about your white versus colored lights. And I have to say, a lot of people say both because they do sell the trees now that blink back and forth. Or you can set them on either one. Um, So I'm going to allow that one for the cheating. A lot of people also have different um, preferences for the tree lights versus the outside lights. But I still think, well, I don't think, I know that in my own little informal survey, white lights still kicked ass. That's right. White lights. 70% of you prefer white lights. And 30% of you say you prefer the colored lights. So there you go. I think it's maybe something 
as you get older. You like the simplicity. I think there's a certain elegance to the white lights. Yeah, it's a little more classy. Colored lights, fun, frivolous. White lights, a little more elegant and classy. Just my opinion. It is just my opinion. On to the blog post for today. We are talking about being present. That's right. I put up a little uh, grounding exercise that I stole from someone on Facebook a couple of days ago. And it says that if you need to ground yourself, this is another great way to bring yourself into the present moment. Name five things you can see. Four things you can touch, three things you can hear, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. Looks a little bit like my guided gratitude journal, does it not? But learning to be present in the moment, it's one of the hardest things to do. It truly is the only way to experience all the goodness in life. So it is worth working on. It's something that takes time to master and even more time to remember to keep doing it. My favorite example of this is just a plain old cup of morning coffee. You don't realize how much you love it until you don't have it. I had to get some blood drawn on Saturday, so I had to fast until I got there at 8 a.m. I had three whole hours that I had to go without a cup of coffee, and I missed it badly. My husband greeted it. Greeted me outside the facility with a large cup of coffee from Wawa. And that first taste was scrumptious. And the next. And even the next. But then, I stopped paying attention to it. It's so simple, yet so hard to maintain. It's the same thing with the food we eat. We often love the first few bites from our plate, but then we shovel in the rest without really thinking about it or tasting it. It's time to focus on one task at a time. And you know, I am a big, uh, you know, I, I, I really am bad at this. I am a reader. I read while I eat all the time. I need to stop doing that. I need to sit and focus on my meal, on tasting every morsel that goes into my big pie hole. So every time you lift that coffee mug to your mouth, stop for the moment. Relish the taste of it. Feel the warmth of the mug in your hands. Make it an experience. We are so often on autopilot that we miss out so much of what is right in front of us. Did someone ever compliment your work area and you realize you don't even notice it anymore? You may have put a lot of time, effort, and money into your workspace. Take the time to appreciate it. Look at it when you come in first thing in the morning. Smile at how much you love it. Make it a little more cozy with a fuzzy throw for the back of your chair. Take in the scenery and appreciate. Sit back with wonder at how much you love your space. Being present has been something I've been practicing a lot when it comes to my dog. She's getting on in years. I want to relish every moment I have with her. I watch her sleep. I pet her almost every time she nudges me. I play ball with her when she's in the mood. I know that some days these moments, someday these moments will be gone. And I want to cherish them now. Mostly I want to be present for them. It's the absolute best when she's nuzzled up to me on the couch and she starts to snore. (laughs) How do we make the most of these moments? Well, take notice of them more often. Stop what you are doing and look around. When you make it a point to notice more, I guarantee you will. One of the reasons I love my Christmas tree so much and usually put it up early and keep it up late is because I just sit and stare at it. It brings me into the present. It brings me into joy. Once you start noticing things more often, remind yourself to keep doing it. Write yourself a note that says stop and stare or be present. Truly is a gift. It's human nature to go on autopilot, which is why it's so hard 
to break the habit. But keep at it. It will be so worth it. Oh, it is Tuesday. Grab a taco. Take the time to notice one thing today that you love in your everyday life. And you will go to bed thinking about it, prolonging the experience even more. Try it. See if it works. You got nothing to lose. Now go out there and be badass. I'm right here cheering you on. Thank you for listening to The Hopeless, hosted by Wendy McClure. For more inspiration, please visit hopefulist.com. Thanks, and we'll see you tomorrow on The Hopefulist. Look around you right now. What's one thing you're grateful for? Oh, my tree. Oh, my other tree. Oh, my orchid. Oh, my flowery curtains. Oh, I could go on and on.